Well, hello there. Thanks for joining us. My name is Justin and uh, if you don't know uh, me very well, then uh, let me tell you this. I'm not a very competitive guy. I kind of like to think of myself, I'm kind of a beta male, I'm quite calm and relaxed, I'm happy to sit on the sidelines and watch others fight it out, unless I think I can win. And when I think I can win, I have like this kill switch inside of me that flicks on and I suddenly go from being very calm and relaxed to being hyper competitive. It, it flicked on the lineup for the dad's race at my daughter's school sports day a few years ago and I looked up and down the line and thought I have never won a sporting event in my life but in this lineup of middle-aged men and granddads I think I can beat them and my hips and thighs ached for a week, but I had the glory of being a winner to bask in. It, it flicked when I was playing the basketball game with our youth pastor, Joel. I think I've mentioned this before because I am still bitter, but he beat me by one point. I was so angry. I slammed my basketball on the floor in the foyer at church and stormed out. And our senior pastor, Johnny, was a bit surprised at the aggression that he witnessed, but the most recent time it flicked was at Laser Quest. Now I'm very proud of this, so we've got the photo of the high scores and you will see with 1,379 points, Jasper is the winner. Now, yeah, my name is Justin, not Jasper, but Jasper took the wrong pack. So Jasper took my pack and I ended up taking Jasper's pack and with Jasper's pack, I was the overall winner of the whole game. Now you might be asking yourself, well, why did Jasper get the wrong pack? Well, there's two reasons why Jasper took the wrong pack. Number one, because Jasper's a loser. And number two, because Jasper is six. Yes, I was the overall winner at a six-year-old's birthday in Laser Quest. What a champion. But listen, when, when the kill switch flicks on, right, it just, it just flicks on. It was like taking candy from a baby. Uh, I sometimes get labelled as a cheater on the staff team at Renewal, which I am not happy about at all because I don't cheat. I just play to the edge of the rules and maybe see which ones are a bit bendy. But then I was listening to Harriet's preach last week about running our race according to the rules and felt very convicted. So following on from Harriet's message last time about running to win, I want to talk to us today about pressing on. My message title today is Press On. When have you ever felt like just giving up? Sometimes I think when we get tired and drained and low on energy, it can be really easy to just feel like, oh, I'm just going to give up. Sometimes we feel like giving up when others discourage us and just rain on our parade or whittle on our fire or just drown out what we think is a great idea and we can feel like, oh, I'm so discouraged. Just what's the point? I remember when I was volunteering in our children's department here at Renewal, going to visit a theologian who was in the church. He'd been teaching the Bible for many, many, many years. And I took him at the things that we'd prepared to teach the children to go, oh, would you just have a look at this and let me know what you think? And he tore it to shreds and then said, Justin, why are you bothering to try and write something when you can just buy it off the shelf? I was so discouraged. I was like, what's the point? I just want to give up. Sometimes we feel like giving up because we failed. We've fallen. We've got something wrong. We've let our guard down in public and now everyone can see that oh, we're not quite as good enough as we like to think that we are the, the image and projection that we've presented is not actually what's behind the curtain and we can feel like I've failed, I've messed up, I've got it wrong, I just am going to give up. Sometimes though it's more subtle. 
Sometimes we, we give up, not because things have gone wrong, but because things are going right. Actually, we're starting to see a level of success or achievement or winning, and we, we just get a bit slack. We think, oh, well, I've achieved now a level of fitness, or I've achieved a, a level of health. I can just go a little bit easy on myself. Or we think, I've got this relationship into a great spot. I've invested so much in this person, but then we just get a bit sloppy and we start taking each other for granted. We, we get success in our jobs or school or college or uni or exams or we pass something and we think, yes, I've made it. And because we think we've made it, we stop putting the effort in and we stop doing the things that we did to get us there. It's called the hubris of success. We think because we've achieved now, we can just take our foot off the gas and coast for a little bit. But the problem is when we do that, we start drifting backwards. And before we know it, we've lost the ground that we had gained. Whether you feel like right now you're completely on the floor in your walk with Jesus. Maybe you listened to Harriet's message last time and you're like, oh man, I'm not, I'm not running in the race. I'm not even crawling. Maybe you feel like, hey, I'm not running this race. I am flying it. Like I am bossing it. Things are going great. Me and Jesus are like, this things in my spiritual life couldn't be better. Or whether you're like, Justin, I've not even had the chance this week to think about how I'm doing I've got two words for all of us. Press on. Press on. Let me read you our uh, Bible text for today from Philippians 3 verses 12 to 14. This is the Apostle Paul writing and he says this. He says, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which for for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Paul says, I press on, I take hold and I strain forward. Press on. So Paul says, I I haven't already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ has taken hold of me. I think primary school sports days are always a loads of fun for just absolutely loads of reasons. But one of the things that we have to be taught as children pretty early on, and I remember this, I don't know whether you did, but as you're running the race, often what children will do is when they see the line approaching, they'll start to slow down because they'll go, oh, I'm nearly there. Oh, it's nearly over. Oh, I'm nearly at the finish line so I can take my foot off the gas. And we have to be taught as children to not run up and stop at the line, but to keep going just as fast until we've crossed the line. It doesn't matter how much track we've got behind us. We have to keep going until we have reached the prize. Uh, In in the exercise class that I'm a part of, one of the things that the trainer very gently has to keep shouting is, all the way in, all the way in. And what he means is, but he's too polite to call me out, is, Justin, I can see that you've slowed down before you reach the cone. You've stopped doing your, your burpees or your bear crawls or your running, and you're, you're drifting in now. Don't drift in. Keep going strong all of the way. I think sometimes we, we need that lesson in our spiritual life as Christians. We think because we've been saved, we've put our trust in Jesus, we've been baptised, he's filled us with the Holy Spirit and now we go to church once a week, we're like, we've arrived. And the Apostle Paul would go, no, 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 you've just started. Press on, keep going, don't give up, you haven't already obtained it. By the time that Paul is writing this letter to the church in Philippi, he's achieved a lot 
in his life for God. He's planted churches. He's written parts of the New Testament. He's traveled parts of the known world telling people about Jesus. He's raised the dead. He's cast out demons. He's seen great miracles happen. But even he says, no, 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 no. I'm not stopping. I'm pressing on. I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to slow down before the finish line. I'm going strong all the way to the end. In fact, our, our English words press on. They're, they're a little bit weak for what I think Paul was trying to say. In, in his original form of Greek, it, it's more like Liam Neeson from Taken. Now, I don't know whether you've seen the Taken franchise, but it's a great set of films. And Liam is an ex-CIA operator, like tough, scary guy. And his daughter gets kidnapped and he somehow gets on the phone to them. And he says, listen, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have any money. But what I do have is a particular set of skills. I can shoot six-year-olds at laser quest. No, no, no. Skills I have acquired over a long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for you. If you let my daughter go, this will be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. I will kill you. That's a really bad Liam Neeson impression, but I was just getting into that. It's just a brilliant speech. He's like, I will find you. I will aggressively hunt you down until I've got my daughter back. I guess my issue is my special set of skills is probably tap dancing. But, uh, but when Paul says press on, he's saying aggressively hunt down. He's saying be focused in your faith. He's saying be relentless in your faith. He's saying fix your eyes on a goal and keep going until you get there. What are you aggressively hunting down in your faith journey? What are you going after? What are you saying, I will not rest until I have pressed on and reached this? Have you, have you ever read through the whole Bible or, or listened to it? Like, like if you've never read it through, hunt it down by Christmas this year. Come anything I'm going to have got from Genesis to Revelation. I'm going to hunt it down. Have you ever had a point where you've been so generous that you're now giving to somebody else knowing that, OK, I'm probably going to have to go without now? Like, actually, I'm not just giving out of my abundance, but I'm giving and it's going to have a cost to me now. But I want to be like Christ. I want to put my faith and trust in God. Listen, you're going to have to aggressively hunt down a generous spirit. It won't come easily, but you can pursue it. Do you have tight and close relationships in the church? Who, who could walk into your house and cook a meal out of your fridge without you batting an eyelid because you're just like family together? If you don't have those kind of relationships, hunt them down. I mean, don't go Liam Neeson on people, right? But you've got to put the intention and the effort. You've got to keep going and not give up and go, I will keep pursuing until I have this depth of relationship that I believe God has created me for. Because here's the thing, we have not arrived and we will not arrive by being passive or complacent. Whether we think we're winning in our race or whether we've tripped up on our noses in the floor, it doesn't really matter. Press on. Go again. Set your eyes on something. Have a focus and aggressively hunt something down. Paul says, I'm only at the beginning. And Paul has seen more than, to be honest, most of us will probably see in our lifetime for the kingdom of God. But he's saying, I'm not getting complacent. I am pressing on. Press on, there is more. 
I guess we've had the Taken film, which is a little bit violent, so we should probably go to a more family-friendly film. So we'll, we'll go to Finding Nemo, in which a whole group of children are massacred in the first 30 seconds. But because it's Disney, we can get away with it. Uh, and I want to introduce you to these birds from Finding Nemo. They have one word. Mine. 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 In, in our development as humans, in our early childhood development, there's a couple of really important milestones that we reach. And normally these milestones are accompanied by the kind of acquisition of new language. One of those really important milestones is when children learn to say the word no. They've suddenly discovered I've got a mind of my own. I am not the same person as my primary caregiver. I'm a different person and I've got my own opinion and I've got my own thoughts and my own desires and my own wants and I'm going to express that by going, no. The, the other milestone that they reach is accompanied by the word mine. Mine. And you suddenly start to see toddlers realising not only am I my own person, but I can have things. I can own and possess things. I can lay claim to stuff and say, not only am I me, but this is mine. And that's where in the toddler groups you see all the fights on the care, the car's table and around the My Little Ponies and the teddy bears and the books and you have the snatching and the hitting and the fighting all kicks off because the toddlers are going, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Now, we do kind of have to teach them to be sociable and to share and to learn to kind of get along with others and be generous with what they have. But, you know, we also teach them there are certain things that are yours. There are certain toys that go away when certain other children come to the house. There are certain things that actually you don't share, but you keep special to yourself. It is OK to possess certain things, to have certain treasures, things that are, well, they're, they're mine and they mean something to me. When Paul says, I, I press on to take hold, that take hold, it's, it's giving us this image of, of a toddler going, no, 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 that's mine. I, I think you get a glimpse of this in our English. I take hold, I grab hold of it, I reach out and possess it's, it's, it's not quite snatching, but it's not waiting politely in the queue. Over our uh, recent holiday, we took our children to a theme park and I, I went to the coffee shop halfway through and ordered a latte and an Americano. And it, it wasn't one of those coffee shops where they take your name. So at the end of the bar, there was just this kind of mob of people and these coffees just being put on the counter. They go, oh, it's Americano, oh, it's cappuccino, oh, that's a latte. And I was like, oh, well, which, which one is mine? Because you're not calling my name, so I don't know if that Americano is mine. So, so I stood there for about five minutes going, oh, is it mine, is it not? Of course, in that time, while I was kind of hopping from foot to foot, somebody else was just sweeping in, taking the coffee and walking out. And in the end, I kind of had to put my big person pants on and go, if I want a coffee... <laughs> The next time they put one down and go Americano, I'm going to have to go, that's mine. I have to get my elbows out. I'm going to have to assert that I've paid for one of these Americanos, so one of these must be mine, and I'm not standing here till five o'clock. I want it now, so that one is mine. I think that's what Paul is saying here. He's saying, hang on, Christ Jesus has taken hold of me for a reason, for a purpose. He has grabbed hold of me, which means there are things that are mine that I need to lay hold of. I need to keep going and hunt down my progress and my walk with Christ, but there are things that I need to lay claim on. That, that joy, that joy of the Lord that is my strength, sometimes I need to get up in the morning and go, that's mine. <laughs> I'm having it. And I'm not going to let my tiredness or my circumstance or my anxiety for the day or just my general grumpy morning demeanor to get in the way. I am going, no, that is mine. That peace, 
that Jesus said he gives to us, that he leaves with us, that he's written our name on. When troubling circumstances come along, when suffering hits us in the face, when we are uncertain about where things are going in the future, we have to lay claim and go, all of that might be going on, but that peace is mine. Jesus grabbed hold of me so that I could grab hold of that and I am having it. Jesus said he has come to give us life and life in its abundance. So my elbows are out and I am laying hold of that and claiming it is mine. If he snatched me from hell, then I am going to cling on to heaven. If he paid the price for me to be bought out of sin, then I am going to lay claim to my holiness and sanctification and the Holy Spirit working in me to change me. If Jesus was tormented so that I could have peace, I'm going to have to make a decision at some point to claim it and go, rather than listen to my stinking attitude, I'm going to listen to some worship music right now and claim hold of the peace that is mine. Like a shopper in a supermarket on Black Friday, my trolley is in front of me, my elbows are out. And if Jesus has paid the price for me to have these things, then they are mine. Not material things, not things of this world, not things that make us look or feel better than other people, not things that push other people down, but things of the spirit. Like Harriet was saying, the fruit of the spirit, they are ours. But it's for us to lay hold of them and go, that's got my name on it and nothing is stopping me from having it. Paul says, I aggressively hunt down. I lay my hands on that which Jesus Christ has already put his hand on me for. And then he says one more thing. He says, one thing I do, I forget what's behind and I strain to what is ahead. Where are you straining at the moment? Is it forwards? Or is it backwards? Forgetting what's in the past. Maybe what's in the past is is terrible. But Paul would say, come on, press on. Maybe what's in the past and behind you is great. But Paul would say, come on, press on. In, In this idea of straining forward and forgetting what's in the past, there's this idea of just neglecting the past. And I think if you are tending to the past, then you're neglecting your future. But in order to tend to your future, you have to neglect what is in the past. But that can be so hard, can't it? Because our past keeps showing up in our present. What they said to us still rings in our ears, Justin, why would you write your own material? You're not a theologian. What they did to you still makes you feel like you're unworthy and broken. What you did to others still in your mind disqualifies you from God ever using you and you can't move forward. And all of those things can be really painful and all of those things can be really difficult to deal with and it may be that you you can't do it alone you need help and support but I can tell you this if you are tending to your past then you're neglecting your future when Paul says to the church in Philippi I forget what's behind me there's a lot of things that are behind Paul at that point he he was part of the murder of Stephen he consented to the death of the first Christian martyr He spent his time persecuting and jailing those who followed Christ. Paul says, I have to forget that. He'd been educated in the Jewish law. He knew the Old Testament, God's word, beyond what anybody else did. But he said, "I, I can't be casual and think that that gets me anywhere. I've still got to keep pressing 
on forward. He's planted churches and written parts of the New Testament and seen incredible miracles. People healed, people saved, people set free, people raised from the dead. And yet he says, I can't sit around going how great the glory days were. I have to strain forward. I've got to prioritise my future. My effort has to be forward focused, straining ahead, not letting what is behind me hold me back. I wonder what's behind you. Maybe it's just terrible and awful. And if it was, my heart is for you. I'm so sorry that's been your experience. Maybe it's been amazing and maybe it's been brilliant and I'm like, oh, that's so great for you. But what is God calling you to tomorrow? Because that's where you need to be straining. That's where you need to be putting your effort in. That's what you need to be reaching forward to. We come back to this idea of the finish line that you haven't arrived. It is not over. The past does not define you good, bad or ugly. One thing you need to do Let it be the past and strain forward to the future. So as I just bring these thoughts to a close, I guess my question would be, what are you hunting down? In your walk with Jesus, what are you pursuing and saying, I am going to find this and I am going to get there? What do you need to lay hold of? You know, sometimes we're too passive in our faith. We just let time and circumstance happen to us when we're called to change the times and change the circumstances and change the atmosphere that we live in. And that can be hard, but it's got your name on it. So lay hold of it. And where is your energy focused? On what God still has ahead of you or what is behind you? As I come to a close, let me leave you with this quote from one of my favourite Christian writers, Dallas Willard. He says this, grace is not opposed to effort, it's opposed to earning. Paul isn't saying, I'm, I'm putting in all of this effort in the hope that God would accept me. He's saying, no, God has accepted me. God's welcomed me into his kingdom. Christ Jesus has laid his gracious hand on me In which case, that means there's a victory for me to run in. In which case, that means, like Harriet said, I can run to win and receive the crown at the end of my life. In which case, there is a bright future for me. So I'm not going to let anything stop me possessing all of those things that Jesus has got for me. So press on. Take hold, strain forward, and let's keep going, running our race, completing all that he has set out before us. Hello, my name's Naomi. It's been great to have you with us for our message here at Renewal. If you want to find out more about what it means to follow Jesus, you can visit renewalcc.com forward slash next steps and you'll be sent a few videos which might answer some of those bigger questions that you might have. Likewise, maybe you just want to say hello to the team. So you can email hello at renewalcc.com. And then if you're really enjoying all of these videos, what you can do is click the subscribe button, which is the wonderful red button that you cannot miss on your screen to be notified of any other videos that come in. You can also listen to our messages on the go. So if you visit renewalcc.com forward slash media, you'll be able to see podcasts and then that will also link you to the YouTube channel. But maybe actually you just want to support the work that Renewal is doing. And you can do that by visiting renewalcc.com forward slash give and you can choose where your finance goes. All that's left to say is take care, God bless and have a great week. Hopefully we'll see you soon.